Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I'm doing, a, if I'm back for this video, which I am doing a looking back at the top 10 uh, PS4 games of 2019. No video game review uh, for this time around, so I'm busy doing this one. I wanted to do this one earlier, but a lot of things just popped up and a lot of things kind of got backed up on, so. Yeah, well, that is life though. And this video will probably come up, will probably be up on Tuesday, which happens to be my birthday. So happy birthday to me. I believe I am turning 38 years old though. Yep, I'm getting old, almost about to hit the big 4 in, 0 indeed. 2019 for the PlayStation PS4. Obviously, the PlayStation 4 is in its like golden years and all that stuff. And with the PS5 just around the corner, this is probably going to be the last year we see any like really possibly though. Although there could be some surprises though, but I suspect this will probably be the last year we see the PS4 and so forth as we move forward towards the PS5. I'm pretty sure Sony has some our focus heavy, heavy heavily on what their big announcements will be for for the PlayStation 5. But I'm sure that there were certainly some interesting games. Some I did reviews of. Some I didn't have the time yet though. I'm going to try to get to them. But like anything, life happens. Sometimes certain things get thrown in and you just have you aren't be able to get to them in time as you want it to be. Um, we basically are going to do the top 10. But first off, we'll start with the first part, which is about our honorable mention and... 10 through 6. But we'll start with the honorable mention first, which is those games that didn't exactly make it in to the top 10, but they are still worth, at least to some degree, um, worth checking out. Uh, the first one I want to do is the one is Kingdom Hearts 3. After numerous years, after waiting, after waiting, after waiting, we finally got Kingdom Hearts 3 and all that. And while it's basically, to me, it's more Kingdom Hearts. That's not a bad thing. If you've basically been following the series for a while, then either you enjoyed it then, or you didn't enjoy it then, and all that stuff. For some people, it was sort of a big disappointment, though. Others didn't, didn't think it was a disappointment, but it is definitely still an enjoyable game, nevertheless. And if you've been wait, following the series then, I'm sure you're going to stick it through to the end with Kingdom Hearts 3. The next one I want to talk about is Days Gone. Um, this one didn't really get as much of a big response or not a lot of great reviews and all that stuff. I played a little bit of Days Gone and it's not a terrible game by any chance. But I will say when compared to a lot of the exclusives on the PS4, compared to things like Ratchet and Clank, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Null, I kind of feel this one is the weakest one of the exclusives. It's not the most terrible exclusive, but it's not as strong as the other exclusives um, out there. Nevertheless, it is still an enjoyable game and it's worth checking out. The next one I want to talk about is the controversial one, and that is um, Death Stranding. Now, I didn't get hugely far in this game. I'm still trying to have the time to play, to get through that most of that stuff, but I will say Death Stranding, I can see where this game is kind of controversial to a lot of people. Some are going to like it, some are going to hate it though. I think story-wise, it looks, story-wise is very interesting. It has that kind of, that Kojima vibe to it that most people remember, you know, from like from the Metal Gear series and all that stuff. Um, the visuals, even on a base PS4, it still looks nice and all that stuff. Obviously, it's not going to look good to say, like, maybe on the PS4 Pro, or even when this game comes to PC as well. But nevertheless, it is an interesting game, and there are those who might like it, those who may not. And some will argue it's kind of like a walking simulator or delivery simulator and all that stuff. And that's true to some degree, but I didn't find the game to be as, so far at least based on my time with it, as awful as some on the internet will make it out to be. Nevertheless, I could see why some may be viewed as um, controversial um, in a way. And last but not least, my next last honorable mention is Borderlands, the Game of the Year edition though. 
um, as a great way to sort of build up hype for finally Borderlands 3 and all that stuff. Um, the first Borderlands game is still an enjoyable game. Um, nevertheless, um, I, I'm maybe because I'm a fan of the Borderlands series, maybe because I like the whole looter shooter, the visuals, the story, the gunplay still holds up very well. So it's still an enjoyable game even after um, all these years and all that stuff. So, yep. Borderlands definitely makes it into the honorable mention. <clears throat> One second. All right, with the honorable mention part out of the way, we'll get started with the um, 10, 10 through 6. These are, we'll start off with those, and we'll start off with the first one, number 10, and that is Medieval, though. A port, or shall we say somewhat of a remake of the original um, PlayStation Classic, though. Uh, Medieval is sort of like a game that kind of feels like a throwback to, you know, games like Ghouls and Goblins or Maximo Ghosts of Glories. I never played the original one on the original PlayStation, though. So playing this one, I did find it to be fun, but also I thought it was a little bit... There are some a little bit of difficult spikes at time that may or may not turn people off. Some of it is because some people feel that it stays maybe a little too close to the original one, and that might be true to a certain degree. But nevertheless, it's fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nice to see um, the series returns. Hopefully, Medieval Two or maybe future entries will make a return as well, and hopefully, this will give Sony maybe. I don't know, bring back Jack and Daster, bring back Sly Cooper, bring back even Dark Cloud. I would love for them to bring that back. So number 10 is on here. And the next one, number 9, and one I never thought I would see this on my list, though, is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Finally, finally, EA actually put out a good game for once, though. I for once, basically, and that is definitely a good thing. And I have to say that I have to give hats off to Respawn Entertainment for what they did with this. This game is like a mixture of Dark Souls with a little bit of Metroidvania thrown into it, though. And it definitely shows that, yes, and it proves EA wrong, that single-player games is is still, still here to stay. And there is still an audience for these kind of games. It's just sad it took EA this long to actually put out a good Star Wars game. And again, put out a good game to begin with, though, since they're so busy caring about recurring user spending or monetization and live service and all that. Um, part of my language, that bullshit that they try to pull all the time, though. And it's just sad that it took this long for them to put this game out. And as much as I enjoyed it... It doesn't change my opinion on the fact that I still think Disney needs to re-examine the Star Wars license and let other developers handle it. Giving the exclusivity to EA it was just a bad idea, especially after the fallout that emerged with Star Wars Battlefront 2. I don't know if next year we'll see a game on this list for EA on it, though, because I pretty much have not... This is the only EA game I have touched in a while. I haven't touched one since 2017. I mean, and I waited weeks until to pick this one up. And it's really and this is and it's really sad it took this long to put out an actual good Star Wars game. And that to some degree is what makes me angry. It took them this long. But in either case, I have to say, hats off to Respawn Entertainment. You guys did a really good job with this one. So number nine on my list, I gotta give to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And I have to get still give my hats off to Respawn though not to EA in any way. They don't deserve the credit whatsoever. All right, number eight I wanna do, and I did a recent review for this, is Control, though. This one came out in August. I unfortunately didn't, unfortunately didn't pick it up back then and all that stuff. Control is a very interesting game, as it sort of is a mixture between, it's basically a third-person shooter, but the story and, and the environment kind of gives up a bit of a part X-Files, part um, Inception feel to it. I certainly think that is a good th it's a good thing. I mean, yes, it's not... I think the game looks fine, even though it doesn't really push the visuals or anything like that. It's a story that kind of gets me hooked, though. And the gameplay is fun as well. It kind of has a little bit of a PSYOPs or Second Sight um, vibe to it. So I will say number eight definitely goes to Control. It's definitely worth... Um, 
taking a look at. All right, number seven is the one game that got uh, Game of the Year at this year's um, Game Awards, and that is Sekiron Shadows Die Twice. Um, Sekiron is sort of is very interesting when I heard that the developers of Dark Souls were working on a new game and all that stuff. And definitely this was it, though. I mean, it's a bit more, it follows a bit more of a stealth side than what Dark Souls is, but still maintains a lot of that Dark Souls feel. Like, like the game can be difficult. You can d easily die in this game if you're not careful, if, and you have to get back all your stuff that you lost and all that. You do have to focus heavily on the parry, that which can be tricky for some people out there. But I definitely got to give credit to the developers, though, of Sekiron Shadow Die Twice. I think they crafted a good game indeed, even though I'm not a huge Dark Souls fan. And it amazes me that Activision Blizzard was willing to publish this game when, like EA, they're more concerned with recurring user spending and so forth. So it surprises me that even Activision was willing to publish this game. But either way, um, number seven, Sekiron Shadow Die Trice, and hats off from From Software for producing this game. And finally, at number six, we have, and I just did a recent review for this, is Code Veen. Um, other than the um, Dark Souls series, um, Bandai Namco put out basically their version of Dark Souls, um, basically without, you know, from software or anything like that. And it's actually not that bad. I mean, some will call it, you know, it's Wafu Souls or Dark Souls with animes and all that stuff. But it is an enjoyable game. It, I feel like this one's leans a little, has a bit more of a Metroidvania kind of vibe to it with its gothic looks, you know, like a Castlevania stuff. To, I feel it's a little bit more towards like what No is, Koei Techno's take on Dark Souls, which still remains one of my favorite Soul games out there indeed. And of course, like anything, it is a Dark Souls-like game, so that's going to be down to what people's preference and taste. But it is an enjoyable experience, nevertheless. And it, if you're in, if you're into those Souls-like games, um, like with Sekiron: Shadow Dice Trice, Code Veen should definitely be on your list. I know some may disagree with me that I put Code Veen above Sekiron: Shadow Dice Trice, but again, that's down to preference and taste. So number six goes to Code Code Veen. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part two, which is going to be to the top five um, PS4, top, or at least the top five PS4 games I thought were the best ones of 2019. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video of the, or what I like to view as the top 10 uh, PS4 games that, of 2019, or at least the ones I think are top 10. I forgot to mention this though, and I apologize forgot to, that I forgot to mention this, is that some of these games I do want to point out, uh, at least the third party ones though, some of these games are available on other systems and even, even on PC as well, but Obviously, since I don't have a PC game, since I don't really game on PC or anything like that, though I'm, I'm focused this one on to the um, PS4 indeed. But again, like I said, most some of these games are also available on the PC and other platforms as, as well. Uh, with that out of the way, we'll get started with um, number five, and our fifth one has is basically Rage Two. Um, the only bright spot for 2019 for Bethesda was the release of this game, even after the amount of BS that they have been pulling lately, especially with Fallout 76. Rage 2, I feel like, is basically what the first one should have been in a way, though. It has a story that is over the top and all that stuff, but the gunplay really holds up very well. It still has that... Um, Doom feel that Doom or Wolfenstein vibe to it to a certain degree, certain degree and all that stuff, and it is enjoyable even if it's running on the base PS4 at 
uh, 30 frames per second compared to, say, like other versions, like, say, PC running at 60 frames per second and all that, though. So, to me, um, hats off to IT and Avalanche Studio for producing a good um, open world uh, first person shooter. It may not be for everybody, but I thought Rage 2 was a fun and enjoyable game and one of the only bright spots for Bethesda in 2019. All right, and now we're going to the next one, which is number four, and that is Borderlands 3. Now, putting aside that um, Rand, the CEO of Gearbox, Randy Pitchford, is a moron, yes, I said that, and because of his behavior and all that stuff, and not to mention this is the same studio that lied about alien colonial marines, Borderlands, or the series in general, but Borderlands 3 still remains one of my favorite looter shooters and first-person shooter series out there and Borderlands 3 is not a disappointment at all. Yes, it is basically more Borderlands and for some people they may not like that. For others they are okay with that and that is fine. Um, the gunplay is still great. The visuals still look nice even on the base PS4 even if the game's running at um, 30 frames per second and it still has that zany over-the-top stuff that Borderlands is still known for and all that stuff. Yes, it's more Borderlands that may or may not sit well with everybody, but it is still an enjoyable experience um, nevertheless, and it's worth picking up whether you have it on your Xbox One, PS4, or even PC, although there's whole um, exclusivity part that, well, not everybody is a fan with, which um, I can understand that, but Borderlands 3, definitely worth getting for your PS4 or whatever your system of choice is. Our next one is number three, and that is the Resident Evil 2 um, remake, though. So with Resident Evil, this one has been kind of rumored for a while. There were talks about Capcom remaking Resident Evil 2, and obviously that really went full steam ahead, especially with the success, somewhat success with Resident Evil 7, which brought the series a little bit back to its roots to a certain degree after many people did not like Resident Evil 6. I still think 4 is the best one out there. But Resident Evil 2 kind of combines the best of what 4 did to some of the classic elements of the Resident Evil series and even made a twist to certain things, such as Tyrants being, well, can be more frustrating than he was before, where in the old Resident Evil 2, there are places you would meet him, it's kind of scripted here. He kind of takes a page out of what Nemesis is and he will stalk you pretty much everywhere. Even the big hallway, even with the typewriter, although he won't follow you into the save rooms or anything like that. Um, some of the cutscenes or some of the um, altercations with some of the people are a little bit different, but it does still follow the whole complete like one campaign and you see what the other character was doing in the other campaign and so forth. So it still follows that though and it still brings back the one thing I don't like about the old school Resident Evil. No, that is the item box. Never was really a fan of those stuff. But either way, it definitely shows, it def for a remake, this is definitely good and I'm looking forward to um, the Resident Evil 3 remake when that comes out and I wouldn't be surprised if Resident Evil um, uh, Resident Evil Code Verona goes down the um, remake treatment. Who knows? Maybe they'll remake Resident Evil Survivor or Dead Aims either way. But in either way, Resident Evil 2, um, the remake though, is definitely worth getting regardless of what your main system of choice is. But it's obvious for the PS4. Our number two game is um, Devil May Cry 5 though. Uh, Devil May Cry 5, the Devil May Cry series in general has kind of had its ups and downs though. While I still view the first one as is, is one of my favorite entries with third one with Devil May Cry 3 being the second place, there are also ones that not everyone likes. The second one is considered by many to be the worst. I kind of agree with that, although I don't think hate it as much as I used to. Um, and many hate the DMC, the one from Ninja Theory. I personally don't hate it. I don't think it's as good as the original one, but I don't hate it as much as the others do. Not to mention it kind of bashes right wing, right wingers and Fox News, which is okay with me. No, but it certainly wasn't the strongest one. Same with Devil May Cry 4, which again, not terrible, but not perfect. 
But Devil May Cry 5 for me is probably the third best Devil May Cry series right next to the third one and the first one. Basically playing either Dante, Neo, or the other character. I certainly um, accidentally forgot his name. I apologize for that though. Each has their own different play styles and different approaches though. And it still is an enjoyable and fun experience. Even seeing Dante wear the hat and pull off sort of a Michael Jackson move to it. So it really is definitely, definitely good for what Capcom did with that. And they certainly had a good 2019 to a certain degree thanks to Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry 5. So number two. Devil May Cry 5 is on this list. One second. Oop. And now my number one game of 2019 is Ossidian's The Outer Worlds. This is a game I have been playing for a while and I've still enjoyed it even um, till this day, even in 2019. This game literally puts Fallout, even Fallout 76, literally to shame, even if that's not what the developer's attention is. The whole world and the lore of The Outer Worlds is just very fun. It's like one part Fallout, one part Borderlands, and one part Bioshock to a certain degree, with gameplay that is very sim that's more like an approved version of Fallout New Vegas and all. Like anything, it does have sort of the choice and consequences, and depending on what your actions are in any way, you could be a good person, bad person, whatever your choice may be. Sometimes that might affect a mission, sometimes that might not affect a mission, so it all depends on what your choices are, and the game just just looks wonderful, even running on Unreal Engine 4. I mean, it may not be the most prettiest game on the PS4 out there, but it still is definitely from a gameplay perspective fun it feels like it does everything that fallout should have done or at least a lot of the fall games that uh, bethesda has done it feels like um this does what those games could have should have should have done and i'll pause if i'm not saying that correctly though so this is definitely one of my favorite games of 2019 it's definitely one you should add onto your list though even though i have it for the ps4 doesn't matter what system you own, whether it's an Xbox One or a PC, which unfortunately it's an Epic Store exclusive for the time being. I know, again, I know not everyone's happy with that though, but this is definitely um, worth putting on your list and definitely worth getting. This is one of my favorite games of 2019. So hats off to Ossidian for making this though. Um, the Outer Worlds is definitely worth getting. I am also very curious to see what the Switch version is gonna be like when that eventually um, comes out indeed. But overall, number one goes to the Outer Worlds. Definitely worth getting, regardless of what your system of choice is. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes my top 10 PS4 games of 2019. And again, these are my opinion. Uh, what are yours? What are your thoughts about my list that I made of the top 10 PS4 games of 2019? Do you think this list is accurate? Do you agree with what I put on this list? Do you disagree? Do you have a different... Do you think there are some games you thought should have been numbered differently? Do you... Or do you have your own top 10 that you think is different from mine? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Um, also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then.